In part one, we were able to emulate the Tira City Model 2 keyboard using an Arduino with some rudimentary bit banging techniques. And we're now at the point where we just need to be able to read a USB keyboard signal using the same Arduino and then using that as the interpreter of those signals to the Tira City Model 2. In the previous video in this series, we used this Elegoo Arduino knockoff to simulate the keyboard signals for the TRS-80 Model 2. The next steps are to be able to plug any USB keyboard into this device. Now, there is this port here, but this is only used for power and serial communications. And if we didn't want to bother using any newer USB keyboards, we could instead use an older PS2 version. These keyboards used a much simpler data protocol that is actually very similar to that of the Model 2. And it's really as easy as connecting these DIN outputs directly to some GPIO inputs on the Arduino. But what I really wanted to accomplish for this project is the ability to use any modern USB keyboard and not be limited to the PS2 protocol. So what we need is a USB host shield which has the USB Type-A connector. And then this board just piggybacks onto the Arduino. And after we install a USB host library, we should be able to get some keystrokes from our USB keyboard. With the USB host shield and libraries installed, I was excited to run some sample code. But after plugging in several different types of USB keyboards and other devices, I could not get it to register anything at all. And after many nights on many forums, I found this article about a known issue with these USB host shields. And it turns out that the manufacturers are often incorrectly using the same line driver chip in both of these locations. So let's check this on my board. The first line driver is the HC125, which thankfully is the correct one. And with my fingers crossed when I check the other one, and yeah, this should be an AHC-125. And for a brief moment, I contemplated fixing this USB host shield. It's time to go in another direction on this project. And I recalled a comment on the last episode about using an ESP32. So I took the plunge and ordered this Freeno version and figured that if I'm going this far, I might as well go all the way and learn a whole new development environment and libraries while I'm at it. Once the board arrived, it was a quick plug-in and within a few minutes, I was uploading the obligatory microcontroller demonstration, also known as the blinky LED. And now that I'm in the groove, it's time to play around with some host USB sample code. And I was pleasantly surprised that after just a few minutes, I was able to connect a USB keyboard and finally visit the quick brown fox and his lazy colleague. Before I go too much further, it would probably be a good idea to actually mount this ESP board on something. Now the pins are the standard pitch, so this board will work on a typical breadboard. But since this unit is so wide, you'll need to use two breadboards, something like this. And then just straddle the power rail if you want access to all of the pins. But I don't want to use up my precious supply of breadboards, so I've opted for one of these breakout boards from Freenove. Now, I'm not sponsoring or advocating Freenove, but this is a really nice board. And it provides a sturdy platform with headers, so you can get easy access to the pins, just like you would have on an Arduino. It's finally time to write some code to simulate the Model 2 keyboard data and clock serial streams. And since this was already working in the first video, it's really just a matter of being mindful of the differences between the Arduino and the ESP32 functions. And soon enough, 
we have our first test of the output. Now, the binary value does look backwards, but this is because the serial data goes from LSB to MSB. Our final consideration is that the Model 2 provides a busy signal, which tells the keyboard interface when it's ready to accept a keystroke. So we just need to enable a busy pin for input and then enable the output only when that pin is high. And finally, just do some testing to confirm that everything is working as it should. The TRS-80 Model 2 is providing five volts to power the stock keyboard. And unlike the Arduino, the ESP32 doesn't take kindly to anything above 3.6 volts. And this means we'll need one of these which is a bi-directional level converter. This unit has four channels on the lower voltage side, plus voltage and ground connections, and then the corresponding higher voltage channels on the other side. We will use this level converter between the ESP32 and the Model 2 keyboard DIN connector. The clock, data, and busy outputs run to the lower voltage side of the converter, along with the 3.3 volt supply and ground. The higher voltage counterparts will connect to the Model 2 keyboard inputs through the DIN connector, and we'll use the 5 volts supplied from the same connector to supply the converter, and then tie in the ground. And finally, we can use the same 5 volt supply to power the microcontroller. All right, just a quick overview of the test rig here. So, we have the star of the show, which is the ESP32, hooked up to this level shifter, and that is then connected to a female DIN connector and then into the uh, keyboard cable of the Model 2. And then finally, of course, we have our USB connector hooked up to our USB keyboard. So let's power up the machine and give it a whirl. All right, so it booted up. Here's the very first test, literally the number one key. And that went through okay, so, so far so good. Could have been a coincidence. And it looks like we are okay. If I just run the time command, for example, so far so good. I'll do the usual keyboard test. Fantastic. So it's working really, really well. Pretty happy with this. Hopefully you can hear me over the noise that this thing is throwing off, but I just wanted to express during the outro how excited I am that this USB keyboard is finally working with the TRS-80 Model 2. This has been a milestone on my bucket list. And for anyone out there who has a TRS-80 Model 2 that wants to do something similar, I've created a Hackaday IO project page, and on that page, there's some background information on this project as well as the source code itself. So the source code isn't much to look at, but it works. And feel free to make any modifications of this code to your heart's content. And there's just a couple of tidy ups left on this project, at least in my mind. Uh, one of them is to look at these special keys on the Model 2 keyboard and replicating those. And the other thing is to build an enclosure for this. So this is a good jumping off point for this video. And as always, I'm looking forward to anyone's comment on this project or any of the other ones that I'm working on. And with that, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.